Hi, I'm Morgan. And I'm Jake. And this is Neverland Neverland Navigation Navigation Radio. Radio. Where we at no point will be resorting to (laughs) any unsavory rule-bending tips. Anyway, I heard that if you get a reservation at Steakhouse 71, just kidding, just (laughs) kidding, just kidding. How are you, Morgan? (laughs) I'm great. How are you? Um, I'm great. I'm, it's a rainy day here in Florida, so that kind of... It's summer, it happens. Yeah, it kind of gets me in, like, a really, like, relaxed indoors mood. Yeah. Okay. The rain. So I'm feeling a very rainy window day. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Just to set the mood. How are you? Yeah, yeah, good, good. Um, excited about our topic because I love the resorts. I love the resorts, too. Um, we did part one of this last week Mm -hmm. where we discussed our favorite resorts to pop into. We started to discuss our favorite. Yeah. Yes. And we're, we didn't make it very far. No, there's so much to say. There's a lot to talk about for each. So last week, if you missed it, we talked about the animal kingdom launch. We talked about grand Floridian resort. We talked about the contemporary some, and we talked about Port Orleans. My family calls the contemporary, the a frame. Hmm. Is that a normal nickname you think? Um, the A-frame does describe the type of building. Yeah. Um, I've never heard it called the A-frame, but it is an A-frame. And yeah. for those reasons, I would say I know exactly which one they're talking about. So what's the problem? Go. There you go. <laughs> I, I just wonder. You guys send me a message if your family calls it the A-frame. Yeah, I wonder if that's, um, that's kind of, um, one of those old, like, nicknames yeah. for something that's stuck yeah. around. Or... Yeah, I bet. I bet. All right. All right. So, 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 aloha. Aloha. Oh my gosh. I, <laughs> I remembered. Good I remember. job. Good job. At the end of the last one, I was like, do we have time for the Polynesian? And Jake's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Our on screen uh, mascot for the video version is DJ Rex, and he's decked out in um, Polynesian esque um, wear today. Yeah. Yeah. So, he says aloha back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Great. Um, today we're going to take a look at a few others of the resorts around Walt Disney World. We'll talk about why we like each, the transportation surrounding each. Things you need to see or eat there. When we feel it makes sense to pop in Mm -hmm. or what it makes sense to pop in for. Yeah. And of course, the whole transportation Yeah. And then we'll see if we need a part three. I mean, this is a great topic. It's a great topic. Um, because if you only do the parks, you're really missing out. Yes, there's much to discuss. Yeah. Um, there's a lot that the resorts have to offer, not just for people who stay at the resorts, right. but reservations for restaurants open to everybody and quick serves. And, and the detailing and design, amazing, amazing, amazing. Ambiance is the main attraction. Absolutely. And if you're a Hidden Mickey hunter, oh my God, you've got to go to all of them. The, yeah. The Hidden Mickeys are a plenty in the resorts you truly i would say you haven't completed your hidden mickey hunting experience if you're really going for it if you haven't done the resorts now there's an entire book for uh an entire hidden mickey book for i should have put that in our non or in our video version uh, but um imagine it here imagine it um so they have like a hidden mickey book for the different parks and then mm. one for non-park stuff it, it includes mm. disney springs i think but hey cool yeah. it's yeah. nice to because there's so much yeah there's there so is much. a lot yeah there's a ton i bet there's a lot on the internet i mean some resorts have their own fan websites and stuff people love the resorts yeah i found myself when we were recording a review for port orleans i yeah. found myself trying to do some research on the internet and i stumbled upon some like Port Orleans fan website. I was like, yeah, wow, there's it, something I, for everybody. As soon as you said that, I was like, oh, he must be talking about the Port Orleans one. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, wow. Yeah. It's one of the first things you see when you are researching Port Orleans. So <laughs> Shout Good, out to yeah. that website. <laughs> Good for you guys. <laughs> I thought you might have been a real Disney website for a hot second. <laughs> All right. Do you want to start us off or do you want me to start? Well, we're starting on Polynesian. Oh, we gotta start. We, we gotta yeah, talk we about said the Polynesian. We at the end of the last one that we were starting on Polynesian this time. Well, then let's and talk. ending with an aloha and beginning with an aloha. So here we are, aloha. The number one aloha. The number one thing I love about the Polynesian is the overall relaxed aesthetic uh-huh. of it. Right. I think like the Polynesian um, detailing with like the wood carving and all the ornamentation. The dark wood. Yeah. Yes, it's all very beautiful. But my favorite thing is that. 
It's just easygoing ukulele music, the sound of water rushing by. Sure. Like, it's all meant to be very transportive and relaxing. Right. And I appreciate that about the Polynesian a lot. Right, right. And they've integrated some IP into the Polynesian. So you've got um, a little bit of Moana. Yes. A little bit of Lilo and Stitch. I know that if it, I don't know if it still is, but the um, nursery area used to be Peter Pan. No. Like, Anyway. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I think that it used to be a lot more heavy on the Lilo and Stitch mm -hmm. um, of it all. and But you can still meet them, or the it, Stitch, perhaps. In the breakfast? Yeah. Yes. On Ohana breakfast. But yeah. Did they bring them back? They took them away from COVID. Um, yeah, and when we went back. there last year uh, for breakfast, was it last year? Maybe. We went to try Ohana breakfast last year, and Lilo and Stitch were still not back yet. Right. I think it's both. Anyway, um, well, I mean, Ohana is a good a thing to mention. So that's a character breakfast, if it is a character breakfast now, but then not a character lunch and dinner. Right. Just dinner, maybe even. Yeah. Um, Ohana is, I would say, a fan favorite, especially for a dinner, at lunch and dinner. They have Ohana noodles, which are just their specialty prepared noodle dish that they have there and people really like that uh -huh. so the sauce on there is a like kind of a cross between a peanut sauce and a teriyaki sauce mm. i've never had them but they sound good mm -hmm. we liked them so much that i came home and tried to recreate them mm, a typical theme how did the, any injury result from that <laughs> no no injury i'm no glad injury. to hear it i'm glad to He's hear it He's making fun of me because that happened when i recreated a dish from grand floridian i'm not making fun of you no no not making fun of me <laughs> not so me. much as just reminding you yes Yes. Not that you need it. Yeah. Um, um, the Ohana noodles sound good. I've only been to Ohana for breakfast, and I can't say it was my favorite bre breakfast experience. No, pretty basic. Um, yeah, and it was, um, I would, honestly, yeah, that is the best way to summarize, is it was just kind of basic expected quality right. kind of breakfast food. Right. Have you been there for dinner? I have not been there for we'll dinner. That's why it. I haven't had the noodles. Oh, right, right. We'll have to do it. Um, we've been there a few times for dinner. Three, I think. Um, re not recently, but in the last five years. Uh -huh. And one of the, those times was really underwhelming. But the other two were great. For quality reasons or service reasons or what? A, a little bit of everything. It was, uh, it was one of those where I walked away store. going, I can't believe I spent that much money. That was not good. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah. But the other times was great. Um, so that was just a fluke and, and that kind of thing does happen. And when that happens I, for, and Jake and I are like reviewing something, we try to go back. Yeah. Um, because just to double check. Yeah. The Polynesians Ohana is, um, it's restaurant. It's not a buffet. It's table service. And it is, um, it's main feature, I would say. But it's all you can eat. Yes. It's an all you can eat family style type of moment, but it's main feature is it's view. I would say it's got one wall of it is an entire window wall that looks out at um, the lagoon the, yeah, and, and, and um, the castle. The castle. The you can see Magic Kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. But so, they pump in the, the firework, uh, no, like music and noise. and um, It's true. Not noise. They're just the music. Not, All that firework noise. Not the firework noise. banging. I like, I like when they pump in the firework <laughs> banging noise. You can't hear that, but it's not pumped in. Yeah. Um, so that's nice. If you get a good firework uh, timed out reservation, then you yeah. might be able to see the fireworks from there. Yeah. It's just good to know that it's a possibility. There's mm -hmm. not that many places around. Um, well, there are more places and not that don't pump in music. Yeah. So this it's is, cool to know that it's on the list. I think this is the most famous out of park place to see the fireworks. Probably. Like restaurant wise. Yep. Yeah, I can't think of a, a more famous option. Um, and yeah, the food is like the Brazilian style. Does that even make sense here? Because it's Polynesian. It's it's where they bring out like the sticks of of meat. <laughs> yeah. Um, skewers of meat and like. That's what I've heard is that it's that meat, meat skewer. Did, did you like the meat skewers? Yeah, I, I don't. I'm not as big of a meat eater as a lot of people, but they were good. They were flavorful. There's a shrimp one, a chicken, and a steak, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and then they do a salad and, like, a pineapple coconut bread. It's all good. It's all good. I think, I think 
for me, it's not like one of my favorites because I'm not like all about the meat. Right. But that would be the headliner now. Yes, that's the, the headliner. Like, yes. If you could eat pounds and pounds of steak and <laughs> stuff, then this is definitely your place. I'll certainly give it a try. Yeah. Um, uh, you mentioned that this was an iconic place to watch the fireworks. Uh -huh. Another thing I love about the Polynesian is the beach down there. Yeah. Because a lot of people like to watch Happily Ever After from the beach because they also pump in the music. So two spots at Polly yeah. where you can hear the music with the fireworks. Right. Um, if they did bring back Lilo and Stitch, by the way. I looked it up. For, oh, for the breakfast. Aloha. Best Welcome friends, back, Lilo. Best friends breakfast. And Stitch. Best yeah. friends breakfast? Yeah. Cute. That's a cute name for that. That helps a little bit. Like if you want some kind of basic again this isn't a buffet they bring out like a skillet with eggs and sausage and stuff right. like that um kind of basic but if you get to meet lilo and stitch and you love lilo and stitch that really helps and beautiful views of cinderella castle yeah or if you want to ditch that and you want to um not do that then you can still watch the fireworks from polly because the beach they pump in the music if you're gonna go to do that i would say um get there a little bit early if you want a chair mm -hmm. because all the people who know they go ahead of time they grab a chair they pull it up to the front of the beach so there's nobody in front of them oh, to wow. see the fireworks and then they all just wait oh wow but that is like 10 times more that is 10 times less stressful than getting a spot in the park. So, like, sure. with perspective, I think it might be worth it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Especially because it's right next to Trader Sam. So, if you're someone who wants a drink or just, like, a non-drink drink, just, like, a refreshment, um, you can just take it out to Yeah, they've got Dole Whip over there. they got all kinds of stuff. If you went Dole Whip, but you're not going into a park, this is, like, the place to do it. There's a lot of little delicacies around... Uh, Polynesian like um mm -hmm. Kona Cafe is also here yes Kona Cafe has a great breakfast and I, one of our favorites yeah I we haven't been Valued. back as much as we should but uh -huh. we should go back soon because I love Kona Cafe it's been under refurbishment an extensive refurbishment they yes. tempted the whole thing yeah um for, but it's open now. for quite a long time yeah. so now that it's back open I I think we need to go back yeah they so they're they're cult like favorite thing on the menu is called Tonga toast. And Tonga it's like toast. really thick, like cinnamon sugar coated French toast with bananas and stuff like that. And a strawberry compote. And the strawberry, strawberry compote. compote is that so makes it. good. I don't care that much about bananas with the strawberry and mm. the thick French toast. It, oh, it yeah. might even be like a sourdough French toast. Mm -hmm. But I know you can also get that at their quick serve restaurant called Captain Cook's. Yes. Good tip. Mm -hmm. Nice oh, to thanks. know. If you like, well, if anybody wants the Tonga toast, but they don't want have a reservation or right. if they don't want to have a full sit down, then yeah. I would honestly think that might be like Magic Kingdom and the Magic Kingdom area is plentiful with good breakfast snack. Yeah. Op like light breakfast options. Yeah. I would add that to the list. And and this is a really good value because like mm. Ohana, you're going to spend an arm and a leg. You know what I mean? Like it's expensive. But Kona Cafe. Over a hook. <laughs> <laughs> but Kona Cafe for breakfast, it's like less than $20 a person. Yeah. 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 And that honestly, it translates big time in terms of like that that kind of what you might think of as a slight savings it really can add up over the course Absolutely. of your trip and it's not that i don't find that kona Ca i find kona cafe to if anything be more um quality of a selection just based on my I limited experience with ohana but yeah. you've been more and i think you would agree. well i'm just talking about the breakfast now yeah. if you're talking about the dinner it's a little bit different do they does Kona Cafe do dinner too? Mm -hmm. Oh, I've never been to their dinner. And I've only done it once and it wasn't it wasn't like knock my socks off, so I'm not even gonna talk about it. Because it also that was like a really a while ago. Well, I'm glad you still have your socks. <laughs> if anything, if yeah. anything. I've got a hook, you've got your socks, huh. we're ready to go. Another thing I love about Polynesian is a lot of times there's somebody in there handing um the flower lays. Uh, Just to everybody. DJ Rex has one on and he says it's very comfortable. Yes. 
So that's a glowing review. What a cute, like, yes. little thing that they do and give to everybody. I wish more of the resorts got into the spirit of things like that. Yeah. How cute would it be if at the beach and yacht club they gave kids little um, paper sailors hats? Yeah, even something little. At Caribbean make beach, you they could do lace. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely, it does. At what? What? Is, what should they give out of the, at like uh, the Riviera? They should give out. Um, oh, I don't. Uh, ooh, little little berets, little dis <laughs> <laughs> disposable. Disposable. Is that what you were about to say? Well, I was gonna say like plastic or something, but not plastic, <laughs> not plastic. because bad for the earth, bad. you know. Yeah. Although I bet these lays are made out of plastic, and we like them, so whatever. Okay, I don't know. That's a real dried flower That's from real. the shores of Polynesia. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Um, should we discuss, oh, in the Polynesian, there's a bar called Trader Sam's. That's yeah. like a fam, a cult favorite, not a family favorite. It's okay. alcohol. Okay. It's like, um, <laughs> it's an indoor. I haven't been. Okay. My dad I said there's something funny with the chairs. He went. Oh, I, I also have never been because I'm not a big drinker, but I really want to go in here and I will order a drink to do so. But yeah, it's an indoor tiki bar. It's got like, um false windows like the enchanted tiki room and it's also got um a goddess <laughs> that lives in there an animatronic oh, wow. goddess um if you guys remember the enchanted tiki room under new management um in addition to adding characters from aladdin and the lion king into that attraction disney also in the 2000s added a beat to the show where a tiki goddess rose from the planter underneath an animatronic tiki goddess and brought the wrath of the gods into the tiki room. Mm -hmm. um, when they reverted the attraction back to its original form, that goddess got moved to Trader Sam's. So now she's a feature within the grotto bar that they have there. Wild. What so a story. Cool to check out. If yeah. You, if you're, you know, someone who might be interested in um, specialty cocktails and tiki atmosphere and maybe getting to see a cool animatronic. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they've got mocktails too. Maybe we should check it out sometime. I'm down. Um, does that cover Polynesian? I mean, it's on the monorail loop, so this is very, very convenient for Magic Kingdom and yes. Epcot. Who doesn't love a mon? Oh, they're building, have you seen that they're building that huge DVC tower next yeah, to it? Yeah, right. Thoughts and feelings? I Polynesian is so expensive per night. I just can't imagine what, if this is going to, mm. I can't imagine what these will cost. Right. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, we'll, I guess we'll wait to see. <laughs> we'll wait to see how it looks before we. What do um, you think? The radio will be an eyesore. Um, I'm worried. I'm less worried than other people. People seem to be very concerned with it, but in the. People get very concerned when there's any changes at all in Disney World. Right, but when you when Walt Disney World was first being constructed, there is meant to be an Asian hotel, a Venetian hotel. The Seven Seas Lagoon was meant to be a lot more crowded with big monument type structures than it is now. In fact, the Polynesian Resort was supposed to be a big tower in the beginning, but it got reimagined into the kind of separate village buildings that it ended up being configured into. Um, so, I don't know, I am less worried about it than other people, but I hope that there is the same level of commitment to authentic theming, grandeur, right. that uh, is, like, synonymous with tower and those original Polynesian, resorts. I don't know, it doesn't seem like it could be the same. You know how they did the tower at Coronado and... It's like two totally separate things. Yeah. I, I love the tower at Coronado, but it doesn't really fit the theming of the older rooms. Does that make sense? It definitely, you can definitely feel the difference going from the Grand Destino Tower to the rest of the Coronado Springs Resort. Um, whether or not they're complementary is maybe a little bit up in the air, but if they build it with the same whimsy that they built the grandestino yeah. tower oh I'll, god I i'll love, be happy with it either love way the grandestino yeah all right um so uh, what's your next one my next one is the boardwalk okay i love the boardwalk yeah the boardwalk resort is um truly now all of these resorts have amenities that are available to you know, well, I shouldn't say amenities because most amenities like the gym, the pool, the hot tub, stuff like that are for, for yeah. guests only. But um, 
the boardwalk, I think more than most Walt Disney resorts, has so much to do for everybody because it's not just a resort. It's also this open boardwalk um, entertainment area yes. that is accessible to all guests. You don't even have to go through the resort to get to it. Right. So, like, you can get there from Epcot. Right. Yeah. So, that combo of things, I think, makes it really, I think the boardwalk as um, a place to go is one of the most underrated. Um, kind of hangouts around Walt Disney World because it's so beautiful over there. It's gorgeous. The proximity to Epcot and to Hollywood Studios, both walking, Skyliner, the boat, it's right in the middle of it all. Yeah. Right? Um, When those uh, string lights that line the boardwalk come on at night, they're very beautiful. It makes for a very, like, I would say it's like a... It could be a romantic atmosphere Mm -hmm. for, like, a date, but it's also just... fun. Yeah, Yeah. it's just classic and fun. Yeah. Um, There's a lot to like. Yes, it's gorgeous over there. There's so much to do. There's so many different places to eat. You're not... It's not like they've got... I think most of the hotels have one or two places to eat, but this one has a lot more. Yeah. It has the Flying Fish, which is a... Gourmet, but expensive. Like, yes. let's, I'm going to go with expensive. I Upscale don't know. seafood. Upscale, yes. Moment. Restaurant. Uh, Trattoria Al Forno is one of our favorites for breakfast. Right. They're not a character meal yet. No, and they used, they to, used be. to be. But they're still great Italian. Right. Uh, Italian style um, food. Yeah. I, I will say, we recently had a really weird experience here, but it's because they're redoing the restaurant. And that that was only for like a week. Yeah, so Trattoria is being re, um, what would you say, refurbished. <laughs> yes, well, our, our, according to our server, being entirely refloored. Yeah. So I hope the new floors are beautiful. I can't wait to be I wouldn't call it there. refurbished. I would call it refreshed. All right. Because it's just a little, like they're only out of there for a week. Yeah. But they didn't stop taking reservations. They just sat us in flying fish. That was the weird part. They yeah. sat us in the flying fish and I gave us a limited it. menu. It I was kinda, no, I don't. I bet that menu is the normal menu now. Well, I guess we, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, either way, it was definitely. Because I saw that the menu changed like six months ago. Hmm. Yeah. Either way, we got to see what the flying fish was like. It was so weird to be eating from another restaurant's menu in there. I kind of appreciate the limited experience that it was, no yeah. matter, right? How, you know, <laughs> um, despite the circumstances. Then there's Boardwalk Deli. There's Boardwalk Pizza, both by like quick serve options. Mm-hmm. There's another sit down. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. We haven't done it together, but I've done it a few times. So on with the beer cheese soup. Yes. Mm-hmm. Something grill. <laughs> some big river grill or something like yeah, that. that's literally a big river grill great yep. that that was not my favorite but it is an option there's a store there's a uh, art store there's a club uh-huh. it, is the club the dueling pianos or is that separate they're right across from each other so atlantic city dance hall is the club that's mm-hmm. right at the end of the boardwalk and then right next to that across the way is jelly rolls which is the dueling piano music cabaret bar situation right. Um, yeah, people love, um, Jelly Rolls, definitely one of the premier, I would say, night-going, um, locations around Walt Disney World. Makes I, us want a donut. Yeah, yeah, I <laughs> always wondered if it was, like, a hybrid bakery. bakery, nightclub type of situation. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it is, no. but I do love the idea of dueling piano, so I really I do, do desperately want to go in here at some point. Yeah. Um, I'll make my way one day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They also have, in the boardwalk, they have, like, a, um, they recently opened a new, uh, coffee shop bakery situation yeah. called the Carousel Cafe. We've been in there one time. Um, it's not particularly remarkable, but it is another amenity. Um, and you mentioned the Boardwalk Deli. We did kind of like that. It was pretty good. But yeah. the thing that we liked more than anything was the fact that they make fresh potato chips yeah. there, Weird. which are like crunchy and salty and absolutely delicious. So uh-huh. like when we go, it makes me want to get a bag of them as a snack. Yeah. So if you're ever walking through the boardwalk and you're looking for a snack, you can just get a bag of those like fresh made good crispy potato chips. Yeah. I do think they about do that? that? Do they sell them as a sign? Oh, I've never even considered it. We uh, went in there and surely. bought drinks, like, recently. And I was like, oh, we could get potato chips. <laughs> but we did Yeah. Didn't. Oh, yeah, because I think we had a reservation or Oh, something. yeah, that's right. But I, w- but I would. Yeah. Next yeah. time, ugh, if we're just going in there because Epcot, yeah. oh, my gosh. And then they're should. building that cake 
store shop, yes. whatever. The pictures look, the pictures of the food look awesome. Yes. So we'll see. Um, now, as far as places that I have stayed, this is my least favorite room. Oh, no. Yeah. That's right. You had a, I totally forgot you had a bad experience here. Yeah. It, it, what happened again? Well, first of all, it took, like, when you're walking, it's weird because it's easy to get lost back there. I think, feel like we spent 10 minutes walking through weird, narrow halls to get to our room. Yeah. When we got to the room, it was kind of dated. So, and, and for a deluxe hotel, I just kind of expected more. Yeah, you fair know? enough. Yeah. So, but. Room is a big part of the stay. That being said, for a pop-in, this would be in like my top three. Yeah, same. It is, uh, I mean, just for um, convenience and transportation alone, but also. This is an attraction in, a, in and of itself. Yeah, it delivers on the um, promised theme of being like a cool, nifty little walk on the boardwalk. Yeah. I think it does. It knocks it out of the park. Yeah. All right. Shall we move off of the boardwalk? Oh, sure. I, I should say there's stuff here. Um, things you can do include Surrey bike rides. So you can right, ride right. a Surrey bike, which is one of those covered bike things. Um, or And it's got a functioning dock for all those transportation boats that we talked about. Um, and it's also super close by to the Beach and Yacht Club. It's across the... Bear, no, what is that? Crescent Lake? Crescent Lake, yeah. Crescent Lake. Are you naming those at all? Are you talking about those at all? Are you? Um, n no. Me neither. Okay, but so we can roll quick, like, just touch. Right. Across Crescent Bay, Crescent Lake, Lake. Crescent Lake, which um, is right next to the International Gateway entrance exit of Epcot. Yeah. There, there's this lake. Five-minute walk. Five-minute walk yes. over a bridge. There's this lake, and on one side is the entire boardwalk area, uh -huh. like we've talked about. Kind of toward the back is the Swan and Dolphin Resort. That's kind of in between. Set back. Set back. Set back. That's yeah. kind of in between Hollywood Studios and Epcot. Right. And then on the other side, there's a there are two resorts that are like sister resorts, the Beach Club and the Yacht Club. Right. Um, in Beach Club, you've got Beaches and Cream. Mm -hmm. Which is like a fan favorite uh, ice cream shop. For the kitchen sink. Yes. That's what it's called. It's got a bunch of stuff. Big old ice cream dish. Like for four plus people. <laughs> right. And that's, there's a lot of fanfare that goes with the serving of the things and people clap when things come out, I've heard. Is okay. That, have you eaten here? Yeah. Did you get the kitchen sink? No. Well, ah. There are only three of us. I think you need to go back with more people. We should go. Yeah, we should go. We, we should, should go. go. Um, We've walked through there before. Yeah, it's cute. It's, it's cute. It's so cute. And they used to have this chocolate cake that Bailey really liked, but they don't have it anymore. Um, but it's like a 50s soda shop kind of yes, situation. Yeah. definitely. And I think that fits in nicely to their... We used to... My favorite restaurant on property used to be um, Cape, Cape May, May at Beach Club, but they used to have all-you-can-eat crab legs. And now they don't. So for shame, we don't go anymore because that was the draw for us. So. Wow, I can't believe they took away the crab legs. Well, it's still like very expensive per person, but now without crab legs, so it, for me, not now it's not worth the money. Back then, it was a really good value. Right. That makes Even sense. though it was crazy expensive, I mean, we'd spend like two hundred dollars. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, for a buffet, yeah, that's kind of typical Disney. So. The 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 uh, if you're not a hotel guest, you're you can't go in the pool. I'm just gonna start off with saying that. But the pool over there is like one of the coolest in yes. the entire area. The two resorts share a pool. Uh -huh. It's like pirate ship water slide. It's got like a shipwreck. Yes. I think that area is called like shipwreck something. Right. It's um, almost like a little mini water park. It's cute. It is very cute. Very extra. Very extra. Yeah. Classic Disney extra right. theming over there. The boardwalk has a cool pool as well that we kind of skipped over. Because, you know, we're not... Does it? Saying, well, it used to it used to be a clown that oh. used to scare people. And oh. now they've since changed it to make it more kind of just classic nautical boardwalky. Okay. It is... You're right. I haven't seen it. It's like behind the facades of the front so it's kind of hard to get into but it's also the only public bathroom on the boardwalk is back there so like if you ask the cast members where's the bathroom they send you right next to the pool so that's the only reason i've even seen the pool very interesting but yeah um cool pools and also in the yacht club is the ale and compass right yes so ale and compass is 
a buffet, although I would describe it more as a slightly more mature theme. I don't think it's a buffet. Oh, is it not a buffet? No. So at breakfast, well, here's here's the thing. At breakfast, you order something off of the menu, and then you have the option to add like oh a gosh, side breakfast buffet. It it's kind of like if you went to a steakhouse for dinner and they had a salad bar that you could get with your steak. Which is a concept that I think has really fallen out of style. Mm -hmm. It's kind of surprising. But I have to say, in this context, I enjoyed it. Oh, oh yeah, I enjoyed it too. So, like, let's say you order a uh, French toast or whatever. I don't remember what was on the menu at this moment. It's been a, a year, probably. So long. Um, then you could go up, and the things up there were, like, biscuits and gravy and, like, fruits. And yes pastries and stuff like that not not like a full buffet with like eggs and sausage and stuff like that it was like a what like an appetizer like breakfast appetizer stuff. yeah i would it's like i like the it. salad bar of breakfast yeah yeah, yeah. i liked it. it it added value yeah um yeah i but so i would say that um Beach Club and Yacht Club were not on our list, though, because there's not as much stuff. Yeah. If you, I would If you're say, not going to a restaurant. Yeah. If you're not going to um, one of those. But I would say that if you are, so if you're someone who's kind of just dipping into the boardwalk, either for a restaurant or because you've got some downtime surrounding your Epcot or Hollywood Studio days, um, then maybe Beach Club and not and Yacht Club you save for another time. But if you are spending a prolonged period of time, either a rest day or you've built in some resort hopping sure, time or sure. something, then local, because yeah. of your proximity to the boardwalk and to Epcot and Hollywood Studios, I would say it would be worth it to just kind of check out the Beach Club and the Yacht Club if you're like wanting some ice cream or something. Sure, I, yeah. Yeah. The, but you need a reservation for that that beaches and cream though. Oh, for beaches and cream too. Wild, right? Wow. I mean, you might be able to shop? walk up there and but it's not. It's a restaurant too. Right. But yeah, yeah. You might be able to walk up there and see, you know, how long the wait is or whatever, but but they do take reservations. I just wanted to throw that out there. Now, if it's around Christmas, I would suggest you go over there. Because they have a, is the word edible? I mean, nobody's eating it. But they, they've got a carousel made out of, like, chocolate and candy and stuff like that. I that would say actually that's edible. moves. Yeah. And is, like, themed. The horses on this little moving carousel that are made of chocolate or whatever are, they're decorated differently every year. It's cool. It's wild. I had never seen it until this past year. And it was really cool. Yeah. It, it was worth the trip for that. I don't know that. If I didn't have a reservation for the restaurants, I don't know that I would check out those resorts just for the theming because inside they're not particularly right. like jaw dropping or anything. They're like just not Animal overly Kingdom yeah, Lodge yeah. or they're, something. They're really nice and classy, but not like they super are. Disney. They're themed. they are even in especially I would say in places like Ale and Compass, there's definitely a level of sophistication mm -hmm. to these resorts that um, is kind of separate from other disney yeah resorts there's another restaurant over there that we went we went for i think michael's birthday i can't remember but there's a seafood type of something no over it was there. a steakhouse oh yeah i'll look it up in a minute all right but it was for us it wasn't great but i've heard great things so it must have been an off night for them oh are you talking about it used to be called yacht masters or something yeah that's not yachtsman's or something yachtsman's that's what it's called Yachtsman's Steakhouse or something. It's something else now, isn't yeah, it? I think or so. did they? Oh no, I'm thinking about Caribbean Beach where they updated. Um, now they've got Sebastian's over there, used to, or they used to have Sebastian's or something. Yeah, it's still Yachtsman's. Um, yeah, Yachtsman's Steakhouse. And that's with the. They have like a dress code and stuff there, don't they? That's like proper fancy, not like. I don't. I don't think so, but maybe, like, maybe. Well, maybe no, no, to no. An extent. When I say dress code in Walt Disney World. You there mean are, no flip-flops. Right. It's a, is it signature? I think so. See, yeah, it's the signature resorts, the fancier, or the signature restaurants, the kind of fancier ones. When or no flip-flops. Disney, yeah, when Disney says dress code, they just mean <laughs> no flip-flops, no shorts, right? Yeah, it, this says, there's a sign when you enter that says, we, re we respectfully request that you wear business something. Wow. Yeah. Well, there you go. So then, yes, for Disney, that's a dress code. It's for not sure. the same as some of the um, nicer restaurants outside of Disney. But yeah, it, it, it was nice. It just, I don't know. 
All right. Well, that's all the time they're going to get out of us. That's for sure. Yeah. Are you ready to get off of the boardwalk? Yeah. Take a boat sure. or something. <laughs> you can, you yeah, have an I'm option not, to take anything. Yeah. I'm not. Um, go, we're not going to deep dive into Swan and Dolphin because they're technically Marriott resorts. Um, and they're just review, not on our list, are they? Yeah, they're not. And and that's they're they're not as intricately themed because they're not originally disney you know what i mean they're also like if you want to get to them from the boardwalk you can and i have but they are a little bit off the beaten path so they're kind of hard to dip in and out of i found i would say that they're i agree but if you decide to stay there like if you're a, a marriott bonvoy member which i am so i'm definitely gonna be staying there soon oh. um because you can you can use your points if you guys didn't know this if you've got marriott points you can use them there um convenient nice convenient especially if you especially if you're like a business traveler and you're racking isn't there plates. another marriott on disney property the, the three that i know of are the swan the dolphin and the swan reserve which the mm. swan reserves the new they're all those three are all together right. All right um but they're very conveniently located because you can walk to hollywood studios or epcot yeah it's that's not nice. super close but it's walkable you can it's yeah <laughs> if you choose if you so choose so Who's next? We are going to do a part three. I did a good old uh, boardwalk, so if you want to do one of yours, then I would love to hear it. Hmm, it's hard. Um, I'm going to go with Art of Animation. Ooh, We didn't fun. already discuss Art of Animation on part one, did we? No, we have not. So my favorite, you guys probably know this by now if you listen, have listened for a while, my favorite movie when I was a kid was The Little Mermaid. Yeah. Like, that, watch it over, 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 over. You know what I mean? So when they put in Art of Animation and there's a Little Mermaid area with Little Mermaid rooms, I was like on top of the world. Yeah. 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 Have you seen the new Little Mermaid? Not yet. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. We have had, my my parents were just in visiting. I haven't had time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me know what you think. Yeah. You got to go be um, part of her world. Uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll go this week. Nice. Um, Art Although of... we did go see uh, Elemental. What? Yeah. You prioritized that over the No, they, I could see that with them because they hadn't seen it yet because it just came out. So we went with my parents to see oh, it. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> How did you like it? But I mean, I would maybe prior prioritize it because I have only like one out of like 12 live action movies that they've done. Not going to get a fight from me. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been looking forward to Elemental for a hot minute. You know what I mean? Hot. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You're so funny. I did not do that on purpose. <laughs> of course not. Of course not. Anyway. Save it for the judge. Um, so the Little Mermaid rooms make me happy. The theming at Art of Animation is amazing. Just when you walk in, when you walk in where you would check in, but, of course, you don't have to check in. You can just walk in there and head to the gift shop area. It is gorgeous. Yeah. It really is nice in there. It, the whole idea of it is that they are... We had the great pleasure of speaking to a cast member named Art <laughs> at Art of Animation. I'll never forget because, oh my God, how could you? Yeah, how um, could you? Who was part of the opening team over at Art of Animation who kind of described the lobby to us, which was kind of whimsical. Um, because the when you walk in on the right-hand side of you, there's a wall full of concept art. And it goes from base form sketches and as you walk through the lobby the concept art evolves into the different versions of the characters it gets a little bit of color and then by the time you make it to a ceiling fixture um a lighting fixture on the ceiling at the end of the lobby then you can see like the full background shots and movement and all that added into the yeah it's animation so stuff. much and so it's cool it's really cool you and, take a and, little trip down the art process. yeah just amazing yeah then there's that chandelier right right and and then in the store and even just the decor in the store it's that store is really cute it looks like um an artist shop right it's like big old paint brushes big, and yeah paint tubes and stuff and yes exactly i love that and they have a... I love the whole sketchbook... Uh, aesthetic. Aesthetic, yes. yes. And that's everywhere. Yeah. It's on that, the sides of the buildings. That's their it's, whole vibe. That's their whole thing. Um, I will also say I really enjoy their... I, I'm not one to recommend a resort food court to anyone. But their food court is a tribute to the background art of each yeah. shop, right? Yeah, and how cool is that? Like... 
Lion so, King. Yeah, you, cars. all all over there are um, background scenes, not with no characters right. or anything like just that. Just pride rock or Aerial. just yeah yeah just ariel's grotto ju- right right i was just about to say or, and then there's the cars area which... right which is just those big radiator springs those big desert rock formations you know yeah. it's just really it's neat how they put different emphasis on different elements of animation sometimes without you necessarily even realizing that that's what you're looking at you yeah I, we didn't know until he told us yeah cool yeah Lovely. amazing and even the ceiling had like if you look up at the aerial section, it's like the top of the ocean, like what she looks right. up at. You know what I mean? The surface. It's yeah. so yeah. yeah. The details are really cool. Right. I especially for one of as far as Walt Disney World goes, the more moderately priced end of things, um, being art of animation. Um, it it is um it is really cool how much detail and thought they put into all of the um, decor elements they've got going on there. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I would say it's a little bit more, like, upscaled and polished than maybe, like, an All-Stars I agree. I, I think it's like they took the idea that they had behind All-Star movies and then made it better. Yeah, they bumped it up yeah. to the next. Because I mean, it is also has... much newer. Yes, it is. Right. So, of course. Movies has Toy Story, which would fit kind of in over there. Yes. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I, I just think that they did such a good job. I'm not even a big Cars fan. You're I not a Cars so, girl? I'm not, I'm not saying I don't like it. I just, Life I is a high one. I just didn't dive in like I did with, you know what I mean? I'm not a super fan of Cars. But that area is so awesome that it doesn't even matter. Yeah. So Actually, I feel that way about the Cars area in Disneyland, too. Mm, I'm, well, yes. People say that that's some of the best theming ever made for Disney Parks is over there in the Cars land yeah. over at Disneyland. Yeah. Um, this is structured in different buildings. And then in between the buildings are, like, themed courtyards, mm-hmm. themed after different movies. Yeah. And that's what Morgan is talking about when she says... Um, the cars park. Oh yeah, like it's hard to imagine. No, I just the words are kind of hard for that. But it's like a outdoor stretch of land. Yeah, with like props and even like um, themed horticulture. Yeah, to match y- the yes. movie. In the, and it's in really cars, cool. it's like you're in the desert. Right. Right. But then when you're in the Lion King section, it's like you're in the jungle or whatever. And it's pretty impressive to the point where like the hotel um, pool in the car section the front of it looks like the motel from the cars yes. universe and like a really cool facade mm-hmm. and then the pool itself is actually not that impressive that's one of those small pools over there yeah but just the, the, it's not the main pool right yeah. it's just a side pool but the theming and the um all of the the structures that they build around and of course you can take pictures with some of your favorite characters from yeah. cars in there yeah it's a pretty impressive offering for just like there's a lot an outdoor there's a lot the more i think than than what we were used to with the all-stars like in the little mermaid right. section they've got the little pool the little side pool but there's a, a bunch of different of the giant characters like you would see in all-star where they're how big they're like huge like four floors or five floors. we looked up how tall they were when we shot the video so yeah. go back and <laughs> go back and watch the uh did we do an art of animation review as yes. well yeah go back and watch our art of animation review uh, on the neverland navigation youtube channel mm-hmm. for um some interesting info about all yeah. of the different theming going on there. yeah but in addition to those giant characters there's a bunch of other stuff too yes you know what i mean um and like there's the in lion king there's that whole scene yeah, they do like a little diorama. Yeah, of and a then scene. there's the elephant graveyard, which little kids can kind of co play in. Right, it's yeah. interactive as well. Which and is then that awesome. gi- that pool area is Nemo themed, and it's very, very um, extra. Yes, a lot of like beautiful coral formations, yeah. schools of fish in sculpture form. Yes, very cool. Yes, the- so these are more maybe kid. You know what I mean? Like yeah. beach club is very adult indeed there's no it's sophisticated like, it's sophisticated it's, classy yeah. um but not really super themed it's dark in some places yeah and then this is more maybe aimed towards kids although i love it with my whole heart yes a lot of energy a lot of color everywhere mm-hmm. um and it's also on the skyliner 
loop. Yes. Which adds a lot of value. It does. Of course. Um, but also it provides for a really cool moment in the Skyliner if you're not afraid of the Skyliner. Yeah. Where you're gliding directly over water. Yeah. Which yeah. is really beautiful. Right, right. That that part is pretty amazing. We've taken that leg of the Skyliner trip at times of day where the sun is setting. And to see the reflection of the sunset in that water as you glide over the top of it. Yes. And then gorgeous. you've got huge fiberglass aerial <laughs> up on the left. Yes. So if you don't mind, maybe we can real quick talk about Pop Century since they're together. Let's do and it. And then we'll we'll break for part three. Part three. I've got more to go. I do too a lot. I oh, love the hotels. I love the hotels too. Um. So did, was Pop Century on your list at all? No, but I really considered it. Yeah. Because it is, like Art of Animation, it is one of my favorite of the more like, you know, yeah. decently priced. <laughs> yes. Manageably Value, priced. So... Art of the Animation is probably the best value resort, but it's also a lot more expensive than the other value resorts. So I almost want to give it its own like category. Ma value it. Ma, ma, ma <laughs> yeah. Ma <blue. laughs> Neither yes. are good. Neither are good. So we're going to scrap that. But yeah, I I understand what you mean, especially considering the fact that depending on which room type you want mm -hmm. and depending on what time of the year that right. you book it, right. then it can feel a little bit more like a value or it can feel very firmly like moderately priced. Yes, yes. So, you know, you take that for what it is when you're trying to plan how much these things are going to cost. Right. Hook, they they hook up do with a travel agent or something. Yeah. You can figure it out. Right. We, yeah. Um we Art of Animation is the only one that has multiple room like family suites yes. of the value resorts, but they can get pretty pricey. We did stay in one. Lion King um Jake and his husband had a room and then uh, my husband and I had a room, and yes. then Bailey had like a pull-out couch. Right. And oh my uh, god, it sucked so many people. It did. It did. I and was it impressed had two by full that. bathrooms, which is like impressive. My pull-down bed that I experienced was not the most comfortable thing in the right. world. Right. Um, but that being said, when you were For looking a kid, to sleep that many people in a pinch, and especially if that's a child on right. there. You are absolutely good to go. And Kids honestly, I don't I'm, have that problem. They're yes. all right. <laughs> and I'm glad I had the experience because I'm like, oh, well, this is what it is. I would recommend this for like a, a big family, family or yes. choose two, you know, small groups of two or whatever. Right. Any, anytime. More so, I think, for a big family. But yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? If you've got four kids and you're going, this is probably what you need to do. Right. But I would say big rooms that are decently priced at Walt Disney World are hard a hot come commodity by. and hard to come by. Yeah. So if you've got two sets of travelers looking to split a room, I would recommend these because you just kind of have more space, a partition in between mm -hmm. you, and you might get out at a decent rate. So, you maybe, know, yeah. maybe, depending I, on I if have, you're lucky. I've looked a bunch of times for like my, when my parents want to go and I want to go and usually booking two single value resorts is cheaper than a two bedroom uh, suite. Yeah, two value um, resorts for sure. And that it felt a little tight for how many of us were adults the time we went. Don't I, you think? I would say a party of three and a party of two together in that room is yeah. tight. Yeah. But it, you know, if not, maybe if if we had been two and two, like two couples, it might have been a little better. Absolutely. Um, but although that bed still would have been that bed, the Murphy bed. Yes. Um, but the there's a lot of reasons the art of animation for me would trump a about an all-stars experience obviously you know what i mean like not only in terms of pricing is disney saying we value this resort more but also obviously it's on the skyliner the theming is kind sure. of an upper tier yeah. there's it depends on what you're looking for in your stay but art of animation has a lot to offer for a lot of people yeah um i also think that it's great it makes great use of its space there's always something to be interacting see, with to yeah. look at to mm -hmm. see there's no dead ends it's not weirdly formatted like some of the resorts are yeah you know it's that boardwalk thing was crazy to me i yeah. felt like i was in that scary movie the hotel <laughs> the, so shining, the shining yeah. the shining not the shining <gasps> we were just down it, it was like long long nothing happening Everything Always. looks the same. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was so weird. I don't love that feeling in a hotel. Yeah. Because I, as someone who is afraid to get lost in a hotel. Yes. And we one time we did get lost <sighs> because it was it's just weird, oddly laid out. Maybe that's because of age. I don't know. 
I could see the boardwalk receiving a refresh at some point. Yeah. That, that would be cool. And they could do it building by building so they don't have to shut it down. Yeah. As There's the a bunch of buildings. Improvement. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, anyway, so so about Pop Century. Pop Century would be my favorite value resort that actually hits that value pricing a little bit better. Like, for example, I was looking today at um, costs of a value resort that in for two weeks from right around now and um the all-stars were clocking in with a florida resident deal at like 140 and actually they were uh tiered this yes. time so mm -hmm. even more so than last time that i looked it was like 130 for sports 140 for music 150 for um uh, movies or even 160 and then it was like 180 for pop century and then 200 and something for art of animation nah. for a one bedroom art of animation big spread but it shows you that they're priced by demand and it, the, if you're on the skyliner loop you're gonna pay more of course yeah so pop century has the skyliner loop it's got the big over-the-top theming uh -huh. i love it um it doesn't have it does have IP, like um, there's a Lady and the Tramp in the 50s section, yes. for example. But it's not screaming IP because the different buildings are themed to different decades. Right. It's a little bit less. What Where the all-stars are... <sighs> I'm trying to think of this in a way that doesn't sound like... Like, I'm trying to diminish them because I do think that they're a great value, especially for, I like love all-star music and movies. Families, mm -hmm. especially for families with kids. Oh, my gosh. The value here is, like, it speaks for itself with the all-stars. You all -stars. can't get a, like, cheap hotel outside of Disney for the price I can Often usually not. get an all-star music. Unless and, you're somebody with really nice. rewards or some, right. you know, some situation like that. It's true. The all-stars usually, and, you know, the, price, the prices will fluctuate, the value the value there is really there. Mm. Um, what I would say about pop, like you're saying, where the all-stars resorts sometimes feel a little bit like the Disney store that used to be in the mall. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, sure, sure. It's like a big, splashy, almost um, like pop-out type of aesthetic. And the pop century resorts are, because they're themed to the decades, there's a little bit almost like a Guinness Book of World <laughs> Records style, like, appreciation for the decades. They're, uh -huh. like, cool, fun facts. Mm -hmm. And, like, they show the technology of the yeah. different time periods with, like, video game consoles, laptops, cell phones. Like, they, they kind of show yeah. you the progression of culture. Right. Through the different themes. Yes. And it makes for a little bit more of, like, a, a fun experience. I think... It's really great for nostalgia purposes for the adults. Yes, you know from what I a mean. I, point I of view. love the '90s air like section of buildings because a lot of that stuff, well, all of that stuff is from my childhood. Yeah, a little bit of the '80s stuff is a stuff that I remember. Uh huh. Um, not so much the others because I wasn't alive, but I can still appreciate it. So fascinating. Yeah, but if you were somebody that might have been born in the you know, one of those decades, then you're going to appreciate it, that too. Of course. And it's still fascinating. Like you said, if I'm looking at, um, like, in the lobby, they've got big picture frames. I was just going to talk about these. What's that called? Shadow boxes. Shadow box frames that have different toys and stuff from the different decades. Magazines. Fascinating. And all kinds of stuff in there. And yeah. we just went frame by frame and we were like oh my gosh can you believe it yeah. and then when we started to get to like the years that we could remember we were like oh my god i had gosh. that i had that i had that yeah. yeah even in some of the earlier decades you would be like oh i had this as a hand-me-down right or well, my, parents my parents had, had one of these yes exactly exactly it it is it adds a whole nother level of fun now yes. that is a resort where um if you're having you know a down day or something I like a rest day. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's such a fun resort. There's to so much to see. Yes. Yeah. Andrew, it's it's almost uh edutainment. You know what uh, I yeah. mean? Yeah. It it just like scratches the line where yeah. like you can you learn a little something yeah. or you connect with your party about right. history a little bit, but the focus is obviously on like, oh look, it's the yeah, it's the look at the roller skates from the fifties right. or whatever. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's that kind of fun cultural reflection. Yeah. Um, have you had the cheesecake? 
I, the chai dye cheesecake I have had, yeah. Pop Century. Okay, so Pop Century is right across from Art of Animation. Mm -hmm. Art of Animation was originally designed to be an extension of the Pop Century idea. Yeah. Um, that was canceled for declining tourism reasons. And then we ended up with Art of Animation. Um, but they're close. They're across the bay from each other and the Skyliner, you know. Yes, can... and you can walk. It's um, Hourglass. That one's Hourglass. Yes, like. and you can, there's a bridge. You can go across there and explore both. Right. I highly recommend. There's a, a lot of little signs along the walking path around each yes. that give fun facts. It's like trivia. Oh, it is like trivia. And that's, I think, why I love it so much. Mm. Like, I just eat that stuff up. Yeah. So that, that even more pushes it into edutainment, both sides. Really? Walking on Crescent Lake is nice. Although we tried to film a video there once and were brutally attacked by bugs. <laughs> we yes. were like, had swarms and swarms of bugs. That was so wild. Yeah, I remember it, like it so clearly. Bugs, you know what I mean? It's not like. Gnats or something. Yeah. We weren't really actually getting eaten or anything. Oh, no. Say. I'm saying I've attacked also act, very I'm loosely. sure that people have, but one of the things that I like about Disney's value resorts is I've never seen a bug in there. Like in my room? Oh, no, no, no. Not yeah, in the room. But I think usually if you're paying $130 for a hotel you, in Florida, you can almost expect it. Yeah. So that's impressive. Just want to point that out. I always see rabbits in the um, lawn there. I don't know if that has any, if there's any connection, but. We, um, yeah. It people is, have said. It is nice, especially in the, in the, re since the refurbishment, um, to see Disney's attention to, the quality of your stay, maintenance of the rooms, even for their lowest tiered resorts. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, they could very easily let those fall into they could. a little bit more of a state Or they could really of... charge more, and I'm glad that they're not. Right. Uh, it, it, when yeah. you're charging the same as like a Best Western or something, like what? Yeah. I, I'm shocked. And especially if you're a Florida... Um, if you're a Florida resident, you're a pass holder, right? Or even a Disney Plus <laughs> subscriber. Yes, yes. You Disney can... Plus subscribers right now are getting the same discount as the rest of, like the, those of us that are pass holders, right? And live here. Yeah. So there's a lot or of good the opportunities holidays. to save. Yeah, they're doing a special holiday mm -hmm. promotion right now. So there's definitely a lot of ways where you could make that um, that trip even more accessible to you. Yeah. Um. So you know, I'm really glad the Free All Stars parking. are there. Yeah, not to mention free parking yeah, is back. And it, right, and everywhere else, I feel like, charges you for parking. Yeah. And then you get the free bus to the park. So non then you Disney don't have resorts, to... you mean? That's what I meant. Non Disney it's resorts so are charging for parking. Yeah, parking yeah. fees. Ridiculous, yeah. but it is what it is. And that's true of all major cities. So it's not just a, around Disney, but it's a, it's annoying me. I hate fees. Yeah. It, it, like, just put it all in there. Yeah. Tell me what I'm paying. But that, you know, the fact that it is free parking is a reason why they don't want you to stay there if you don't have a right. uh, have a booking. So here are my, here, let's leave this episode off on this. Um, if you are um, going to one of these resorts and you are not staying there and you don't have, well, you're not going to have a reservation at dining for these, the pop or the art of animation because there's no restaurants in there. Mm -hmm. You can't park there. Just a reminder, you right. can't, they will not let you park there. Right. So, by Disney rules. So, you can take the Skyliner to explore. Yeah, if you're in a park, you can take the Skyliner to explore. Yep. You can park at Disney Springs and take a bus. Yep. To, yeah. Anywhere. To anywhere. You can take, you can do that to anywhere. And then, if you're going to do a resort day, I mean, do that. Go to Disney Springs, get on a bus to one of these, then take a Skyliner to the next one and the next one. Fun. You yeah, can, fun. You can get to a bunch of the resorts by Skyliner awesome on both. Day. An awesome day. Yeah. The days that we've just gone resort hopping, they're great. They're great. Days full of adventure because you're... There's so much to see. You, you're almost tired by the end. Be, not like park tired, but just tired because you feel like you've gone to so many different places. Well, and you've walked a lot, but that's, you know... That's good. Yeah. That's that, like, what a great value to get from your day, mm -hmm. you know, your non-park day where you're not necessarily you know, spending admission money, but, but you're getting to see all these cool things. And you're still immersed. And the pictures you'll take. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Especially in these, like, all-stars, pop, animation. They've yes. got things got built to pictures. be photo ops. Yes, absolutely. You could be yeah. in the 101 Dalmatians. You could be in an old TV yeah. that the oh, Dalmatians so are watching and you're in the frame. I love that photo op. That's one of my favorite photo ops. I think that's where we took our 
thumbnail it for is. that video. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was super fun. But they've got a lot of like little photo op places like that where you can take some really cute pictures without maybe if your kid is too shy to meet the characters mm -hmm. or you're just not focusing on, you know, characters. Although sometimes photo ops. the characters are walking around these places too. Yeah. Yep. We've been known to spot a couple of people mm -hmm. just kind of freely wandering here and there. Yeah. Yep. Alrighty. I think that's part two. That's part two. Two of three. Yeah. Next week will be the grand finale mm -hmm. where we'll talk about the, the rest of our list. Yeah. Um, if you have favorite resorts, we would love to hear about those. Yeah. Uh, let us know on our social media. We love talking to you guys. Yeah. We're at Neverland Navco on Instagram and uh -huh. TikTok. Yeah. And we've got a YouTube channel where we've reviewed a lot of these resorts. Um, Neverland Navigation Co. on YouTube. Yep. And we're Neverland Navigation on Etsy. And uh, we've got a website that's neverlandnavigation.co. And if you're listening on YouTube, hello, please make sure to subscribe to this video and leave us a like. We would really appreciate it. And leave us a comment letting us know which of these resorts you've been to, what your favorite resort is. Or if you're an audio listener, hello there in the microphone. Hello. Um, and we would love it. Super appreciate it if you not only um, subscribe to the podcast, but also left us a review. Yes. That would be awesome. Yeah, that helps us out. We like to read them, too. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. And until next time, we'll see you on, on our, our next, next adventure. adventure. Goodbye. Bye.